Well, it's finally here. It is once again patch day for Battlefield 2042, and if you're like me, you've got to dust off your copy of the game to see what this update entails, because that last hotfix back in January left the game in a rough state for a lot of players, and although I didn't have a ton of issues at first, as time went on I kept running into worse and worse micro stutter and even some hard crashes that players have been reporting across all platforms with the last patch, which is why it was super disappointing to see that this patch was delayed multiple times, this 3.3 patch, and we never actually got a hotfix to correct the issues with the last patch. In total, the 3.3 patch has been delayed at least twice in total over a month of time, and I mean, there's no other way to put it, guys. The, the changelog is just disappointing. I did a double take when I opened it up, and the scroll bar was not very large at all on the side of the page. A ton of the patch notes page actually isn't really patch notes, it's just a apology skin pack being given to players, and while free content is always neat, I don't think anyone's really looking for more skins right now. Especially seeing at least the weekly missions have continued to drip feed those as we waited for the last patches. Not only are a large number of fixes completely missing from this patch, but much of the hype, if you could call it, for the patch is actually a return of a, as the quote goes, legacy feature from previous Battlefield titles. There's finally a new scoreboard, and while I think it's still very, very busy and uh, could be improved upon, at least we're going to have it as this video is going live for you guys to watch right now. Before we take a longer look here at the patch, let's give a shout out to the sponsor of this video. It's actually a channel partner, Apex PCs. Apex not only built my base computer, which I then used to make a custom Ranger themed PC, but I also worked with their build team to set up a three tier system for you guys where you can pick a pre-configured Apex PC build designed to play the same games that I do. As I saw with my build, Apex is known for their attention to detail, so if you want a PC that not just works but also has great cable management and top tier name brand parts, even down to the fans, Apex is a PC builder you can actually count on. Make sure you check out Apex PCs down at the link in the description where you can also see those Ranger Dave pre-approved Apex PC configurations. You can also save up to $250 off of your purchase depending on which build you buy with the code Ranger Dave, and your purchase even helps support my channel as well. Okay, let's dive back into this 2042 patch and this new scoreboard. Finally, you can actually see all of the players on both teams and their detailed scores. I'm actually rather impressed that DICE responded quite quickly to the negative feedback on their first updated scoreboard concepts a few months back, and they've actually added the death counts back onto each player's score. I was kind of expecting them to dig their heels in with that one, like I think they're going to do with the removal of cross-team chat, and that they would never want to put that death counter back in, like we saw in that original concept, but here we are, it's actually there. I also appreciate the attention to detail here where you can actually see not only the top 20 or so players on your team, but also the players above and below you if you're down in the 40s on your team score wise. But you can also see that your useless squad mates are down there at the bottom. It must have been actually pretty tricky from a design perspective to figure out how to fit 128 players onto a scoreboard. And I think they have a pretty good solution here with the top 32 for the enemy team and then this actually pretty nice sectioned out scoreboard system for your own team. After all, the classic scoreboard is good for not only comparing your digital ego with your teams, but also seeing how you stack up against enemy players, figuring out, you know, is there a bolt player sitting in a corner of a map somewhere that I need to focus on and help my team take down? Or in some cases, could there be a hacker that no one's noticed because we couldn't see anyone's scores? At the end of the day, it's a competitive FPS and it's good to have a full scoreboard back, but it's disconcerting is the word I would use that it's taken this many months for us to get it. And that even beyond the time itself that it took to develop it and design it, because like I was just saying, there were some tricky elements to the design, but the most concerning part of this delayed scoreboard launch is that DICE had to turn to the community 
to figure out what they wanted when the answer really should have been obvious for a studio that's been making these games for over 20 years. We wanted the classic scoreboard. We didn't want it to change would be what I would underline twice. We didn't want it to change. And here we are reinventing features because of unnecessary changes. Like I mentioned in past videos, that could be applied to a lot of the feature changes here in Battlefield 2042. And if tweaking every single one of those legacy features according to the community's desires and player feedback is going to take six months every time, then I really don't know if this game has a future where anyone's going to still be playing it once these updates continue to drip feed out. I will focus on the positive here for just a minute, and that's that, to my surprise, having a scoreboard, a true Battlefield game scoreboard, back in the game actually made a pretty big difference for how much I was enjoying my round-to-round -round gameplay. It's such a small thing to have back, but something about it just made it feel like a Battlefield game a little bit more. It was cool to see me and my random squads of console players climbing the ranks as we fought our way to the top of the scoreboard multiple times, and it was also neat to kind of keep track of enemy players you had to watch out for, you know, the really good Condor pilot with the dedicated repairman in the back, or that determined Bolt player that just won't leave you alone. It just makes it feel like you're playing uh, less of bots and more actual players, although I will say that the, uh, the game's population continues to be an issue even today as a new patch is dropping the first match that i played my entire squad was all console players and then i had multiple rounds where we only had about 39 to 40 players per team and i kept running into a bunch of ai filling the servers out so even today on patch day the servers aren't really hopping focusing on the positive though the scoreboard gets two big thumbs up for me it really actually makes a difference in making this game feel better to play. Let's hear it for those legacy features. Outside of the free skins and the new scoreboard, we have one particular crash fixed on Xbox and Origin on PC. We have a few keybinding bug fixes, some aim assist tweaks, which I've heard uh, have been quite annoying for console players. There are some bugs fixed there, and then a few tweaks to modes like Conquest and Breakthrough where some uh, triggers were not firing correctly, and they've also fixed a couple of things in Hazard Zone. But, uh, man, Hazard Zone, I forgot even existed. Is is anyone still playing that? <laughs> Especially when there's, I think, some more significant bugs that uh, I think they should be focusing on. But to give them credit, we have gotten an additional detailed explanation blog on how they're approaching some updates to the maps. They seem to be on the right track with reading the community feedback and also looking at their behind the curtain metrics and seeing some of the playable area issues with these maps and they seem to be on the right track with fixes but again the timetable seems to be the really really concerning part while they've discussed that they've already updated their internal map design guidelines to address this community feedback and also what they've learned from the game's launch it really sounds like we're going to be looking at a very long development time to add some additional updates to the older maps. The examples shared here in their map blog post are focusing on Kaleidoscope, one of the uh, roughest maps that people seem to have the most issues with as far as a lack of cover, lack of visual interest, lack of battle flow, too many open spaces, too many unused areas of the map that players just don't go to. But right now we only have their thoughts on Kaleidoscope. And even then we don't have a established timeline of when just the updates for Kaleidoscope will actually be available even in a test environment for players. There's no actual timeline given other than they want to have it out during season one. But again, we circle back around to, this is just the one map. How long is it gonna take for the other maps to just enter the development phase of making the changes, let alone deploying these changes into the full game. As everyone's well aware, because the gaming media has been loving covering this issue, the player count on PC for Battlefield 2042 has dropped off of a cliff. It has hit just a few thousand players multiple times now. I guess my concern here is that with the game needing such a long amount of development time to fix these issues and with some of the core issues 
being a rip it down to the studs or rip it down to the foundation scenario where specialists, for example, haven't even been discussed in depth yet. And that's a, a big issue for the community is give us the classes back. I don't know if even the base map changes are ever actually going to be implemented. I don't want to discount the efforts that DICE has made so far, and I don't want to just be incredibly negative here and just doom and gloom, but if the game requires so much rework, then would it make more sense to just polish what's already there and go ahead and focus efforts on a new title entirely? I'm a long-term Battlefield player, guys, and in case you couldn't tell by this video, I'm kind of struggling to maintain interest in these updates. It's just what I need this game to be is so far from what it is now. Again, it's a rip it down to the studs and not just remodel it, but just completely rebuild it from the foundation up. It may just be throwing good money after bad at this point. And I don't want to just keep releasing negative videos about the game. I think everyone kind of gets what the issues are at this point, but I want to try to <laughs> stay up to date with these updates and hope that maybe we'll have a surprise here and this game could eventually be turned around. Until then though guys, here's a look at this patch 3.3 and how it's actually running in game to wrap things up for this video. Well as far as performance goes, it's been a couple rounds now and I would say that the client performance is a lot better. Uh, the game isn't stuttering or lagging as much on my client, but there's still a really bad uh, vehicle hitching and lag going on and it's on multiple servers too I've had it for multiple matches the the vehicles just don't feel smooth I know that wasn't on the list of fixes for this patch but we have that patch coming up in April and I'm really hoping that we get some server performance fixes especially for the vehicles So yeah, two thumbs up from me on the scoreboard in this patch. I just wish it was bigger and we weren't waiting until April uh, for the next one. We'll see how it goes though.